Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So, whoop, lack of prompt. Apparently, you're a bit confused. We're going to sort it out. Also, I was going to do this on PowerPoint, and I was like, no, Christmas crafts. There's baubles, there's presents. There's a little Santa. Loving it. So, the lack of prompt. The lack of prompt that we're learning about today is in, ooh, I can't really see, E. coli. Okay, so this E. coli, poor E. coli, hasn't got any food. So that is why it is expressing its flagella. So it's expressing its flagella so it can swim around and find some food. We've also got inside the bacteria the lack of prompt. So I've made this probably a little bit too small actually. So can you see we have got the red lack i then we've got crp the minus 23 the minus 10 another lack i and then another lack i over here so these are all the binding sites on the operon and here we've got the operon itself so like z like y and like a and they're the genes that are going to be later transcribed and translated into the proteins that E. coli needs to be able to eat, to be able to utilize lactose as its carbon source. So we've got an operon, and then we also need RNA polymerase to go along and make us some RNA. We also need CRP, and we also need lacai made from sticky notes. Literally, no expense is incurred. So if we get back to our little E. coli, poor little chap, super hungry, swimming around looking for some food. Now, luckily for this chap, what it does is it swims into some, got stickers, yeah, I do, some glucose. Gets it inside. Start chowing it down. Loves glucose. So it eats up all the glucose. And as it's running out of glucose, it realizes that actually this is a terrible thing that's happened to it. And so it makes an alarm, which is these Christmas trees, which is cyclic AMP. So you get all these Christmas trees going off inside the cell. And that's telling the cell that it needs to panic because it's running out of glucose. So then we need to zoom in to the opron. Okay, so this is our opron. We've got our cyclic AMP here, which is that alarm for the fact that the cell's running out of glucose. So what it does is it binds to... CRP. Now, CRP beforehand had been hanging out in the cell as two monomers. But as the cyclic AMP binds to it, ah, it dimerizes to make functional CRP. So CRP now can go and turn on lots of genes that the E. coli needs to be able to use things that aren't glucose because it's run out of glucose. So these are all like floating around the cell, waiting to bump into some DNA. And this CRP is going to go and bump into the lacoprom. So here we have the lacoprom. Now, unfortunately, it can't get in because lacai what a douche blocked that right up it's curved it over so this can't get in so it can't help turn the lac operon on so that's all right so operon's off because lac is in there making it so it can't turn on so then what happens is our friendly e coli with its flagella on carries on swimming around lucky for it it finds some Lactose. So these are bigger Christmas baubles 
than the glucose ones, wherever they've gone. Um, because the glucose obviously is just is just a little monomer, whereas the lactoses, they are dimers, so they're a bit bigger. So now E. coli has found itself some lactose. So some of that is just going to get inside the cell. Like that. So inside the cell now, we have some DNA. Ooh, some jello. Some apanic cyclic AMP. And now we've got a carbon source, which is that lactose. So if we zoom in, So now on our prom, we've got some cyclic AMP floating about. We've got some CRP that is dimerized because it's got cyclic AMP bound to it. Oh, it's a Christmas tree. Oh, that's bad. Right, you can buy that. And now we've also got some lactose, which is great. So what this lactose does is it gets converted into allolactose. I'm not going to change stickers. And over to right, malacopron, and it binds to lacai. And when it does that, lacai can no longer stick, no longer bind. So it comes off and it floats away. So now we have got the lacopron with. A lacai binding site up here, CRP binding site, the minus 10 and the minus 35, another lacai binding site, and then here we've got the opron, and there's another lacai binding site down here. Don't need to worry about this because lacai is gone because now we've got allolactose because lactose was present in the environment. So that can go for now because it's just really confusing. So, lacai can't bend the DNA anymore because allolactose is bound to it. So it can't bind and it can't bend the DNA. So now, my minus 10 and my minus 33 site is open for my RNA polymerase to come and bind. Now the problem is, is it really sucks to be RNA polymerase because even though it's binding, it doesn't do a very good job. So it keeps falling off. So it doesn't have chance to start transcribing the genes to make us mRNA. Instead, it just sort of binds and then falls off. So it needs its friends to come and help it. So this is where CRP comes in. So CRP has got its AMP bound to it, which has activated it, which means it's a dimer now and it can bind to DNA. So this transcription factor is active because it has got the cyclic AMP bound to it. So this chap comes and binds to its binding site, which is here, this CRP binding site. So that binds just here. And the thing about CRP is it's a keeper. So cyclic A, sorry, so RNA polymerase comes along, binds, but because CRP is next to it, it stopped being quite so soft. So it's helped it bind really tight. So then what happens is this can then Unwind the DNA, start making a new copy of the RNA. Shana na 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 And then we get our upon transcribe. Yeah, great. That's it. So I hope that helped. Probably didn't. Um but there was Christmas trees inside bacteria, so I'm out. Thank you. Bye.